So, today we will discuss matrix representation of symmetry operation. We have already seen in the last class that finite objects as well as crystals can have different kinds of symmetry and uh, we have names for them like reflection or rotation, two fold rotation, three fold rotation and things like that and we will come across a few more symmetry operations as we go along. But one algebraic method of representing them because each symmetry operation is a mapping which takes points from one position to another position. So, that operation or that mapping can be represented by matrix and how that is done we will look at it. We have all we are already familiar with one kind of such operation that was the coordinate transformation, but in coordinate transformation the vector was fixed and coordinate was changed from one coordinate to another coordinate. From an original coordinate system or an initial coordinate system we went to a final coordinate system. So, the same vector the fixed vector had two different representations. Uh, it had components in the old coordinate system, it had components in the new coordinate system and the two components were related by a coordinate transformation matrix which we called a Q matrix and we will use that notation as far as possible because it is not nice to uh, keep using different symbols for the same thing in one discussion. So, our coordinate transformation matrices will always be Q matrix which is what we have used in the previous lectures also unless and until it is a coordinate transformation from crystal to Cartesian in which case we had called it a C matrix. Then we will look at some properties of such coordinate transformation. So, now the question no, now the question is that that coordinate transformation matrix Q was transforming a vector from one coordinate system to another coordinate system. But once you look at the matrix representation of symmetry operation that is a different kind it is also a matrix, but it will transform it will also transform during the coordinate transformation and how will that behave under coordinate transformation we will look at in this second point. Then the determinant and trace of the symmetry matrix that also will be important and we will look at that and then finally, we will introduce an interesting notation called sites notation for the symmetry operation. So, let us look at them one by one. So, we will begin with the matrix representation of the symmetry operations. So, see as I told that you are familiar now with the so called coordinate transformation. So, in the coordinate transformation there was a vector let me just take a two dimensional example easier to draw and there was a basis A and B. So, we can call it that the basis vector is defined by A and B and there is a vector R, but in terms of the basis a b this vector r will have some components. So, let us say x a plus y b. So, in terms of column representation we simply call that this is x y this vector is x y by x y we mean that it is x times a plus y times b knowing that the basis is B, but if we change the basis if we go from the blue basis to the red basis let us see then the same vector will have now a different representation it will become x prime a prime plus y prime b prime that is now 
the column vector representing it will be x prime and y prime. And the question is that if we know x y, how can we calculate the new components x prime y prime. So, this question we have already handled and we have looked at it that how to go from x prime y prime to x y. So, we saw that that this is done by a coordinate transformation matrix q. So, if we simply multiply the old column vector by q we get the new column vector. So, q is the coordinate transformation matrix. So, B prime matrix. So, this technology or this algorithm we have already developed that how to set up Q. So, this is one thing. So, this is the coordinate transformation which is already done. And let me summarize that coordinate transformation matrix algorithm also. All that we need to do is to write with the old basis vectors, old one is the blue basis a, b and c in 3 D, it will be only a and b in 2 D. So, it will be a 2 by 2 matrix or it will be a 3 by 3 matrix and you have the red A prime B prime C prime. So, you have to write A in terms of its components in A prime B prime C prime. So, that is your first column. So, first column is A expressed as its A prime component, B prime component and C prime component. Similarly, B expressed as A prime, B prime and C prime c expressed as a prime b prime and c prime. So, that way you set up a q matrix. In symmetry operation there is a slight difference although algebra is very similar there also you have to set up a matrix and you have to multiply matrix and all the properties of matrices of course, are true, but there is difference in application. So, we have to look at it once more. So, now we, so that was a matrix Q was a matrix representing coordinate transformation. Now, we want to set up a matrix representing a symmetry operation. So, now the situation is slightly different. The vector x is being mapped into vector x tilde that wavy sign above the vector. So, that is showing the image vector. So, this is and the original vector. So, there is no coordinate transformation involved here. The coordinates are fixed a and b is fixed but the vector itself is moving and vector is moving x from x to x tilde. So, that is the original vector we can call this an image vector or transformed vector. And since this is also a linear transformation this also can be represented by a matrix. So, what we now need so again x will have x will have components
x y x tilde will have components x tilde y tilde and our job is to establish the relationship that what are the components of transformed vector what are the components of symmetry transformed vector here i have shown for example the symmetry transformation is a 90 degree rotation as an example in this diagram but it's not that it can be any rotation or it can be reflection or it can be inversion or it can be roto inversion in the coordinate transformation matrix we were finding the components of the same vector in a different coordinate system now we are finding the components of a different vector a transformed vector in the same coordinate system but you still have this matrix representation so you multiply the old vector by a matrix this time i am calling it w just to just as a notation you can call it again q or a or b but we will usually if we are using symbolically we will write the symmetry transformation matrices as w and the coordinate transformation matrix as q as far as possible i will like to follow this notice this is the notation suggested by international tables also which is the book we are considering as our bible so uh, we will follow this notation if i um, if i tend to deviate by my carelessness and all you are welcome to point that out and correct it so this is the symmetry now this is not a q was a coordinate transformation matrix w is a symmetry transformation matrix but matrices have the same property so if you now see how to i means i like this uh, computer science language algorithm you can say method so method to determine the symmetry transformation matrix w exactly the same procedure why because you multiply if you multiply a many in any matrix any 3 by 3 matrix drawing i am drawing the two dimensional diagram but when i am writing this full matrix i am writing in three dimensional i am i hope this is not causing any confusion all of you are now familiar that we can either the same thing we can do in 2d and 3d 2 by 2 matrix and 3 by 3 matrix but the procedures are analogous sometimes some properties are different that we will highlight so if you multiply it by 100 what do you get from w point of view what does multiplying any matrix by 100 do a simpler way of saying that will be the first column okay so it picks out the first column first column of w but what is 100 in my basis b the first basis vector exactly what we did to establish q we are repeating now for w and what is w supposed to do w is representing the symmetry operation isn't it what was that symmetry operation so 
So, that means by the symmetry operation matrix I want to transform 1 0 0 that means I want to know where will 1 0 0 go where will the first basis vector go by the symmetry operation what is your symmetry whatever is your symmetry operation for example, in this example I have, sh I have shown 90 degree rotation. So, all I have to ask where does A go after 90 degree operation. So, this first column of W should should represent nothing, but transformed A or transformed first basis vector. So, first column So, by W I am representing both the transformation matrix and the process of transformation that also I hope will not I mean you can use different signs that W is the transformation matrix which represents the transformation U, but I am saying W is the transformation matrix which represents transformation W. So, W by W A I am saying transformed W by W B transformed W and by W C transform C. So, the components of the first transformed basis vector or components of the transformed first basis vector is are the components of my first column. Transformed second basis vector forms the second column transformed third basis vector form the third column and I get W. We can do an exercise a simple exercise. So, let us let us take our Let us take an orthonormal, not orthonormal, let us take a, a square coordinate system. So, A is equal to B and the angle between them is 90 degree. So, in this basis A is 1 0, in its own basis the basis vector will always be 1 0, 0 1 and so on and B is 0 1 because b is 0 times a plus 1 times b. So, a and b is this. Suppose, I want to represent w is a 90 degree rotation about the origin o. Oh. So, what is w a? Ninety degree rotation of A takes it to ninety degree. Let us say ninety degree clock uh, counterclockwise. That's also important in rotation. The sense of rotation, ninety degree counterclockwise rotation. So W A becomes B. And what is B in the matrix form? Zero one. what is W B? So, if you rotate B by 90 degree, it will just come opposite to A. So, W B is minus A. 
and minus a in our coordinate system will be minus 1 0. As you know in crystallography we like to write minus as bar, so bar 1 O. So, we have got the matrix if we know this much. So, the matrix representation of 90 degree rotation yeah. first column is w a, w a is 0 1 we are seeing here. So, that is 0 1, the second column is w b, w b is we are seeing here bar 1 0. Now, if you give me any vector, so the power of the matrix method is that you have to know and this, this is the power of linear transformation really, because in linear transformation and w is representing a linear transformation, our symmetry operations are linear transformation. So, any linear transformation is represented by a matrix and the power of uh, the linear transformation is or simplicity of linear transformation is that once you know where the basis transforms, what happens to the basis, you know the entire transformation. So, this matrix represents the entire transformation now. So, I can now have a general formulation also that what happens to a general vector x y upon 90 degree clockwise rotation. So, because this matrix we know is representing the 90 degree clockwise rotation. So, if I multiply any vector x y, the result will be the rotated vector. So, that you can see is minus y x. So, this means by 90 degree clockwise rotation a vector x y what this matrix is representing will go to y bar x. So, this was this was the original vector vector x upon 90 degree rotation so its x component will actually be negative y the original negative y its y component will become x. The y component will become x is uh, very very much visible that you can see that we are rotating by 90 degree clockwise. So, the x axis is coinciding with y. So, the y component will now be x and the y component because the y axis collapses into minus x direction. So, and that is now the current x component. So, x component is minus y.